Hello, and welcome to Latin American's second podcast of the series. Uh, today, we'll give you, be giving you some insights into the Bogota, Colombia market, which is an, a new and emerging market in the region. My name is Steve Sassi, I'm the Regional Director for the Americas here at Data Center Hawk. Here at Data Center Hawk, we want to make it easier for our customers when they decide to expand into new markets, regions, or countries. We aim to provide the latest market information. And so when you, when you decide to go into these markets, you have the latest in market data. Uh, with us here today, we have my colleague and regional expert, Daniel Cajera, senior analyst based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Thank you, Daniel, for being with us here today. Hey, Steve. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. So Daniel and I just spent about a week in Bogota, and we spent a lot of time uh, in Ubers, traveling around the city and visiting data centers and Zona Franca. So, um, Daniel, can you just give the, the people listening here uh, just an overall perspective of the Bogota market size? Yeah, sure. Uh, so after spending quite a bit of time visiting Bogota, Zona Franca, and data centers across the city, now we, we, get, we got a, a solid understanding of the market. Right now, we can estimate the commission power of the Bogota market to be around 37 megawatts. And there is another 60 megawatts of power under construction and a pipeline of about 270 megawatts planned for, for that market. Compared to other markets in Latin America, like Sao Paulo, Santiago, and Querétaro, Bogotá's absorption last year was relatively low. We saw around 12 megawatts of power being commissioned, but the long term uh, for Bogotá still looks strong. And in terms of key players for our Bogota market, we saw some known names from other markets like Odata, Kio, Syrian, and Equinix leading the market. But the region is also attracting new entrants like DH Americas, Edge Connect, Scala, and Ascentin. They're all planning to, to establish a presence in that region. And that, of course, could drive more comp competition and, and more expansion. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's an interesting market in, in the sense that it's, it's almost like a market in wait, you know, it's waiting for, 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 the, for the players to come in, right? So yeah. most of the large data center provider, COLA providers have either purchased land or some have actually started building some data centers, um, which for me, at least it tells me that, that the hyperscalers have been communicating to them that it's, an, it's a market that they want to go into in the very near future. So that's an interesting, uh, you know, for, for us, it was interesting to see that. But the second thing that was interesting about Colombia, and I think it's unique to Colombia, is the Zona Francas. You know, you and I visited a bunch of facilities that many of them, the data centers are located inside of Zona Franca. So for the listeners that, that are that are here today and don't know what a Zona Franca is, can you go in a little, dig a little deeper and so they know what it is? Because, you know, I would say that the majority of the data centers are located inside of these these areas. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, a Zona Franca, in English, it's free trade zone. It's a designated economic area that offers companies various kinds of tax and regulatory incentives, and that's to attract foreign investments and stimulate economic activity. So these benefits typically, they include tax exemptions, reduced import or export duties, and faster customs processes. Uh, what can I say? Like for data centers providers, setting up inside the Azona Franca can be highly uh, advantageous. Uh, one of the biggest benefits, of course, for such a, a capital intensive business is cost savings. So if you are inside a Zona Franca or free trade zone, you can pay zero tariffs on importing IT equipment and also a very low corporate tax rate. However, Colombia's last year, they changed that their tax reform. So players inside Zona Franca or outside Zona Franca, they pay the same corporate tax. But uh, data center operators, they can pay a even reduced tax to be around 20% if they prove they are exporting their services or goods. And that can make a lot of difference in that cost and savings that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, we're not tax experts, but some of the conversations we had to the Zona Franca is that they, t they told us is uh, data center providers who in, in, as, in turn contract with, um, send their bills to, to customers outside of Colombia, that's considered an, an export of services. So like you mentioned, that could, they, I, I would have them look into that, but that could significantly reduce the, the amount of tax that they pay. Yeah, of course. There's another factor that also helps uh, Zona Franca's, they are... They work 24 seven 
And for data centers, that's great because data centers also work 24 seven. And they, in Zona Francas, the security is very strict. It's very, very high. So that's, helps, that's helpful for, for data centers as well. Yeah, and another, I think, important point is, like we mentioned earlier, there's zero importation tax on equipment, right? So any equipment yeah. going into that Zona Franca does not pay any importation tax, which we've seen some other, we've seen in other countries uh, affect some of the data center business, you know, like Brazil, where there's almost 100% importation tax. And some, some hyperscale providers have said that it's too expensive to ship, especially NVIDIA chips to that country because of how expensive they are and the high taxes that they'll be paying you know, sending that equipment into Brazil. So Colombia, I don't think Colombia is going to be a, a major AI uh, country, at least for the near future, maybe down the road. But it, it is an interesting fact that you don't have to pay importation taxes for any equipment you send to to those inside Zona Francas. Yeah, equipments and infrastructure as well. Yeah. So, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it's it, it's almost like a market in waiting for, for some of these hyperscalers to, to make a decision. We know that Oracle has a cloud zone in Colombia today, and it's, they're doing very well from what I've heard. Uh, they're, they need to expand. So, uh, you know, Oracle is sort of the first hyperscaler to, 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 to build a, a local zone. The other, you know, late major hyperscalers are, are looking to do something in the near future inside Colombia to offer a local zone. You know, what are your thoughts? You know, we, 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 we know that some of the major providers like Edge Connects or that, uh, Ascenti, Scala, um, even Equinix, they all, ha they all have land or have started to build. Do you, do you foresee that market ch uh, turning around in 2025, 2026? Oh, yeah. Uh, hyperscales, they, they have prioritized the U.S. market for now in, in the last couple of years. And, of course, with the boom of AI demand that only slowed the, the growth here in Latin America. Nevertheless, uh, we can see uh, that lack of cloud local cloud zones here as a as a future in, uh, growth in on, in Bogota market. Uh, once a hyperscale decide to move to market, they need at least three points of presence for redundancy and and performance. And the only question is whether they'll they'll opt for self builds in Bogota or they'll decide for collocation solutions. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's like like you mentioned. I mean, it's it's just I think. And this is sort of the repeating theme, I, I think, for Colombia is, is it's it's a market that is being prepared for this for this expansion. And I think in 2025, 2026, we will see this expansion. I think something else that was also mentioned uh, several times to us was the political situation in Colombia. Um, you know, currently there's a president that is um, has impacted, I would say, um, it, the the investments uh, that go flow into into Colombia because of his uh, political position, he's more left leaning, uh, and he's changed some of the tax situation. So it's not that beneficial to for what they call foreign direct investment into Colombia. But uh, there's going to be elections in 2026. Uh, everybody believes that it's going to be a more, more conservative candidate. Will hopefully will win the election, and if that happens. I think we're going to see some of these hyperscalers sort of pull the trigger and 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 decide on moving into Colombia. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's the general feeling that we we had during our our visit there. So, uh, you know, just going back to the Sona Franca conversation um and and what we've spoke with some of the data center providers last week, what surprised you and I, I think, was um, the price of land in Colombia, Bogota, right? Um, yep. Compared to some other markets, the price of land seemed a little high, in, in especially closer to downtown uh, Bogota. Um, as you go further out, it, it is cheaper. But compared to some other markets, what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, during our talks to the Zona Francas, we always ask for the land prices and energy also. And it's quite high, the, the price per square meter in, in Bogota. Uh, we saw prices ranging from 250 to $500 per square meter. And that's higher than Brazil. Uh, for example, here in Brazil, in the Campinas region, land can be found uh, around $30 to $40 per square meter. And also in terms of energy costs, we found prices to be around $0.12 cents per kilowatt hour in Zona Francas. While outside Zona Francas, that cost can be around 20, kilo, uh, 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, 
So comparing to Brazil, it's a bit more expensive. In Brazil, you can find energy to be between six to seven cents, land to be around 30 to 40 mega to 40 dollars per square meters. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the price of power, I would say, in Bogota is, is probably in the, it's in the middle compared to some other Latin countries. I mean, it's I don't think they're the highest. They're not the lowest, but they, you have a good amount of renewable energy as well in Colombia. Um, and the price of land is, is high. I guess maybe what well, you don't pay an importation tax, you're paying a land, but, uh, yeah, um, that's it, CapEx it, either way. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it, it has its benefits. So as far as a renewable front, what, what are your thoughts on that for the well, Colombian market? During, during our talks, we, we, we learned that the 70% of the Colombia's renewable energy comes from hydro. But also there is been also there has been announced a lot of uh, increasing investments in wind and solar uh, types of energy. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a general theme through Latin America. You know, many countries in Latin America have some have been blessed with with good amount of water and hydro uh, electrical generation. But as we've seen in many of these countries, uh, obviously, if you have a drought uh, that could impact your hydro output. So many of these countries are trying to not be so dependent on hydro and they're setting up more solar farms, more wind farms in order to uh, to diversify themselves, I guess, with the renewable energies. Yeah, uh, the better offer uh, that helps the energy costs to come, to come down. So, um, you know, we well, obviously we, we visited Bogota, we, we went to the outskirts of Bogota, but these are all regions where we visited were, were supporting the Bogota market. Bogota is a big country, has, uh, you know, some other cities uh, that could potentially become data center hubs, you know, like Cali, Colombia, Medellin, Colombia, those are large markets. And then you have the coast of, of we're in Santa Marta and you have uh, Barranquilla where there's large ports and where the submarine cable systems uh, usually hit, hit land where that are connecting Colombia. Do you see expansions uh, for other secondary cities in Colombia like we've seen in, in Brazil? Well, I think that for the foreseeable future here, Bogota, it's likely to remain the, the dominant data center market in Colombia, given its population and it is the economic hub for the country. However, like in, in other markets like US or Brazil, once that demand starts growing, we may see expansions into countries' secondary cities, and especially those with strong energy and connectivity. Regarding Santa Marta project, its coastal position make the, it makes it ideal location for a subsea cable landing like Fortaleza. And if they do develop effectively, this project could establish the region as a, a critical digital gateway for Latin America, attracting even more investments in, in data center infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do foresee that, that the Colombian coast could turn into a Fortaleza. Um, but some of the some of the objections that we, we heard and these heard last week regarding that is the electrical infrastructure on the in the coast of Colombia is is very underdeveloped. So anybody that builds unstable. a data center, yeah, it's unstable. So anybody that builds a data center on the coast in in, in that area uh, has to be aware of that because uh, you know the, the the transmission lines are just not I don't think up to par to to manage all that capacity. Yeah, and also the connectivity between Santa Marta and Bogota must be really well connected and and highly redundant. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the other thing too, just Medellin and, and Cali, they're important cities in Colombia. I do think they are underdeveloped when it comes to data center capacity. I, I do believe there's a market there for for more data centers to be built, but um, at least for the for the next uh, short to medium term, I don't see those cities attracting uh, hyperscale capacity. Uh, yeah, I do see those as important uh, retail options for for a data center provider so anybody that's looking to sell to retail uh, customers that could be an interesting uh, location for them yeah in the short term in the short term we only can see edge data centers in, the, in those regions yeah agreed so daniel um any closing thoughts on on our research trip to bogota you know what, what did anything we didn't cover in this conversation well, I think uh, Bogota is definitely a market to watch, uh, especially after the elections. Depending on the political outcome, we could expect the data center market to have a, a substantial growth 
from what we saw on the ground, many data centers, they are already anticipating a future demand with some, uh, with some even uh, beginning construction without a secured anchor tenant, that is the, the usual. And that shows that they, they believe in the long-term uh, growth for Bogota. And while land is it's a bit more expensive than other countries, the zero importation tax is a huge factor. And, and overall, I, I think uh, Bogota uh, has a lot of potential. Uh, we may not see the, the surge in demand just yet, but I think the fundamentals are in place. They have the, they have the land, they have the energy, they have the, the, uh, the benefits, the tax exemptions. So I think it, they are in, the, in a good place for a strong growth in the coming years. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, I think Bogota has, has huge potential. Um, you know, I think we all need to remember a couple, couple points regarding Bogota. Number one is, yeah, everybody's talking AI in some of these other larger markets, but Bogota today doesn't have local zones beyond Oracle. So the, the big yeah. three that if they're going to do a local zone, they need to build facilities either on their own or they need to lease that capacity from a provider. When, when their local zone uh, enters a new market, the minimum needs three, three different data centers to create that zone. So multiply it three times three, that gives you nine facilities right there that, that will need to be built out if, if the hyperscalers decide to enter that market. So huge potential there. Sona Francas, I honestly, I wish they did Sona Francas in other countries. I think that's a great um, benefit to data center providers when you're not paying taxes and you're providing services inside this, these facilities. So having a Sona Franca and putting your data center inside a Sona Franca, it, you could be paying more for the land, but in, in, the, in the long run, you're paying less for power because the Sona Franca usually it pays less to, to the local um, power provider. So you can save on power and you can save an import taxes. So Sona Franca is a, a key instrument to the Colombian data center market. And again, the politics, uh, like any other country, the politics impact the decisions. We believe that in 2026, there's a very good a chance that, that a new uh, presidential candidate that leans a little bit more to open markets uh, could win the elections. And if that happens, we believe there's gonna be new investments into that market. Exactly, yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I think that's we had a, a very productive trip last week to Bogota. We've learned a lot. I want to thank all the, all the people, all the data center companies on the Sona Francas that 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 met with us, uh, that exchanged ideas with us, exchanged market information. Um, it is it is an up and coming market. Colombia is the fourth largest economy in Latin America, and and it, we believe that there's going to be uh, some good data center growth in, in the next coming years. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. And we hope you have a great day. Thank you, guys.